Hi everybody. Welcome to Ordinary Differential Equations, the mathematical framework and tools for understanding, modeling, and predicting anything that moves. Hi. Welcome back to Ordinary Differential Equations. Now we're going to begin Chapter 7, and the main topics in this chapter are Lyapunov's method and the LaSalle invariance principle. Now these two techniques are related in the sense that they both rely on finding an appropriate scalar valued function on the phase space that's non-negative that has a certain compatibility relationship with the vector field in a way that enables us to make determinations about stability property of solutions and asymptotic behavior of solutions without actually solving for the solutions. So we're going to begin with Lyapunov's method and we're going to develop this for autonomous general n-dimensional ordinary differential equations and the question we have is stability of an equilibrium point. So we assume there's an equilibrium point. And I want to develop a little bit of terminology first. Suppose we have a scalar valued function of the phase space. We're going to call it uppercase V of X. And the time derivative of that function along trajectories is, is a quantity that we're going to need. So d by dt of v of x. What that means is we evaluate v of x along a trajectory. That's how it becomes a function of time. Take its time derivative. We call that v dot of x. And using the chain rule, that's the gradient of v. That's an n-dimensional vector. Sc uh, scalar dot product, scalar product or dot product, the same thing, with the vector field. But the vector field is f of x. So this is just the dot product of the gradient of v of x with f of x. Okay, now we can state Lyapunov's theorem, and then we're going to give an example to show how it's used. All right, we need, we have a CR autonomous vector field on Rn, r greater than or equal to 1. We want to differentiate it and have uniqueness of solutions, existence and uniqueness of solutions. So let x equal x bar be an equilibrium point of that equation. And let v be defined in some neighborhood of the equilibrium point. We're going to call it uppercase script u. It needs to be at least c1. We have to compute its gradient. And it has these properties. It vanishes at the equilibrium point, And it's strictly positive away from the equilibrium point. And it's time derivative along trajectories. Sometimes people call that the orbital derivative. It is less than or equal to 0 in that neighborhood of the equilibrium point excluding the equilibrium point. Now the less than or equal to is important to focus on. So if these conditions are satisfied, then we say x bar is Lyapunov stable. So we're able to say something about stability without solving solutions, without doing linearization, if we have this function v of x that satisfies these properties. Now I said focus on less than or equal to. If we have strict less than in that neighborhood, then the equilibrium point is asymptotically stable. And we refer to v of x as a Lyapunov function. Okay, let's look at an example. Two-dimensional, x dot equals y, y dot equals minus x, minus epsilon x squared y. And epsilon's a parameter. We'll worry about um, the sign of it and um, whether or not it, it can be zero or not shortly. All right, so 
first thing, if for a two-dimensional vector field with an equilibrium point at the origin, the first thing to do is to try would be linearization to determine its stability, uh, because that's pretty easy to do in two dimensions. But we look at the Jacobian of the vector field evaluated at the origin, and we see that that has eigenvalues plus or minus i. So it's a non-hyperbolic equilibrium point. The linearization does not suffice to tell us about stability. Okay, let me let me um, be a little bit pedantic with that statement. It does tell us about stability of the linear system, but not of the full nonlinear system which we're interested in. And this is the power of Lyapunov's method. So let's apply Lyap the theorem due to Lyapunov. We're going to take this as a candidate for a Lyapunov function. So clearly, this vanishes at the equilibrium point, and it's strictly greater than zero everywhere except the equilibrium point. Now we can compute v dot, the derivative along trajectories. That's just the gradient dotted with the vector field. And if we put in the values for x for dv dx, dv dy, and x dot and y dot, get this. They simplify to this expression here. Okay. So we see that v dot is less than or equal to zero for epsilon greater than or equal to zero. Think a little bit about the equal to zero part. Okay, but it follows then that the origin is Lyapunov stable. Okay, so a lot of questions about this example, and we're going to come back and answer a lot of them. But in the next lecture, we're going to look at the LaSalle invariance principle. And like I said, these can work together with each other. The obvious question is, how did I know to f pick this as a Lyapunov function? Is it the only possible Lyapunov function? Good questions. We'll come back to those later on. So bye for now.